This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for getting up with us to start your weekend. I'm Brittany Folgers. Topping headlines this morning, a man goes on a joy ride in a stolen fire engine. He's in jail now, but Portland Fire says it's now reviewing policies to keep it from happening again. Plus, I don't know. I just think it's just a human treating a human with kindness this is my only description of it. And I feel like anybody would do that. This woman and the Canby community went beyond just the call of kindness. They helped get this homeless man into a safe, dry place. What inspired the project? But first, let's start things off with a check on your weekend weather with Vanessa Paz. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Brittany, and good morning, everyone. Uh, to everyone who's watching, I really hope you took advantage of all of the sunshine we were spoiled with over the past few days because as we head into the weekend, kind of going to be a different story. We'll see some high level clouds throughout the day, which I'll explain more about in my full forecast. But right now, it shows uh, that high pressure is dominating the region. Things are going to uh, kind of switch up a bit as we get into this evening and to Sunday as we're going to see a cold front move on in. And of course, that's uh, going to bring some cooler weather and rain in addition to that. And again, I will explain a lot more as I get into my full forecast. But if you're headed out the door and you're headed to any of these areas that may include McMinnville or even portions of the northern uh, Portland metro area, uh, just kind of keep in mind that you could run into some fog. It's even heavier as you travel south uh, towards Eugene. So maybe you are traveling for the holiday weekend. Just make sure to keep that in mind mind kind of head out the door early and give yourself a head start. We're freezing right now in the Portland uh, metro area and we have a west wind uh, pretty light about three miles per hour. Other temperatures are seeing freezing temperatures. Other areas are seeing uh, freezing temperatures as well, including Cal. So we can outlook highs are going to reach 49 today. I will get more into uh, your Thanksgiving forecast. That's all ahead, Brittany. All right, thanks so much, Vanessa. And let's get you caught up on some top headlines this morning. First, really a crazy story out of Northeast Portland. Police arrested a man after he stole a fire engine and drove it several blocks. Here's the suspect. He's 25 year old Brandon Vandewalker. Police say he stole the engine near Northeast Broadway and 15th last night. Fire officials say they were responding to a fire alarm and that's when Vanda Walker jumped in the truck and took off. Police say he drove it about three miles until they caught him at North Greeley and Going Street. Portland's fire chief Sarah Boone released a statement saying they take the situation very seriously and they'll review their internal policies to prevent it from happening again. Well, the cat shot with a BB gun in Columbia City has passed away. Chester's owners say that they had to put him down. The pellet was lodged right up against his spine and there wasn't anything vets could do for him. The Columbia City Police Department is investigating to see if they can figure out who shot them. Oh, just a sad story. A warning if you have romaine lettuce at home, local stores are clearing it from their shelves amidst an E. coli outbreak. The FDA is investigating romaine grown in Salinas, California, and officials say if you don't know where the lettuce is coming from, just don't eat it. At least 40 people in more than a dozen states, including Washington, have gotten sick. Investigators are still looking for the contamination source. Today, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler will discuss the city's homelessness issue in a day-long forum. The Portland Neighborhood Association is hosting it. The forum features several panels on mental health, safety, and camping and trash. It starts at 8.15 this morning at the Unitarian Church on Southwest Main Street. It's open to anyone who lives or works downtown. Wheeler says he hopes the event will be educational for the community as it works towards solutions to address homelessness. Meanwhile, the homeless crisis has touched nearly every city in our area. Often the stories involve people complaining about campers in their neighborhoods, but we're visiting a community that's stepping up to take care of one of their own. They saw a man sleeping on the streets and found him a home. Mike Benner reports. I get here about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Everybody's gone. This cold metal bench outside a strip mall in Canby is where Glenn Stevens has been sleeping for the past month and a half. It was convenient, it's dry, uh, it's a safe environment right here. This 69 year old has fallen on hard times. It's been truly an experience. And now finds himself living on the streets. I lost everything in my life. I lost all of it. You're looking at what's left. Despite Glenn being down on his luck, he still makes helping others throughout Canby a top priority. For instance, he volunteers at the local food bank. I look for things to do to make the day go by. Super nice guy, yeah. Incredibly nice guy, just a genuine heart. Heather Dorn owns a business in Canby. 
It happens to be near the bench where Glenn rests his aging body at night. The two met earlier this month. So I walked over to him and asked him if he was waiting for somebody, and he said he wasn't. And I said, can I help you with something? And he said, well, I'm, I'm homeless. Am I bothering you by sitting here? Glenn was, in fact, bothering Heather, but not in the way you may think. The thought of somebody like Glenn sleeping outside in the cold troubled Heather. So she turned to her Facebook community for help, and boy, did they step up. They raised more than $2,000 to buy Glenn a temporary home. Oh, my heart is compelled to it. I don't know. I just think it's just a human treating a human with kindness this is my only description of it. And I feel like anybody would do that. On Friday evening, we were there as Glenn was surprised with this trailer. Hey, Glenn. Come here. Gifted to him by a bunch of people who up until recently trailer. were strangers. So that you can call this your home. And I'm excited to show you. <laughs> Glenn now has a warm, safe place to sleep at night. Come on. Your cold nights are over, buddy. And ultimately, an opportunity to get back on his feet. I love you. <laughs> That's the best I can do on short notice. <laughs> What a beautiful story. Thanks to Mike Benner for that. Well, volunteers at the Union Gospel Mission are doing their part to help local families this holiday season. Today, they'll pack 400 Thanksgiving baskets and then hand them out to local nonprofits, churches, and those in need in downtown. The package includes a certificate for a turkey and food to complete a traditional dinner. An update now this morning on a wild story out of Polk County that has people talking all over. Reports of a large fireball falling to the earth. Yeah, the call came uh, in first on Thursday night as a plane crash, but the sheriff's office says that's not what happened. As Morgan Romero found out, they can't say for sure what it is. That I didn't expect. It got chilly while Richard Romano was working on his tractor. Before heading inside, he went to grab his mail. Walked over here and I stuck the key in it and I checked the mailbox and, and I looked up and I could see the plane right here. I reached in to get the mail, closed it up, looked at the mail and looked up and could still see the plane and I started to walk this way, made it to about here and hear a big boom and I looked up and all I could see is a fireball in the sky going down. So I walked over there and looking at it and watching it and it just kind of falling out of the sky and I well, I better take a picture because nobody's going to believe me. Romano called it into dispatch around 5 o'clock Thursday as a fiery plane crash. Okay, sure. I, I think I just witnessed it landed right in that valley right there. He thinks the fireball landed in a rugged remote area past this ridge line. Opposite edge of that ridge. Romano's photos are pretty much the only evidence the Polk County Sheriff's Office and experts have to go off. Life Flight went out to look Thursday night nothing. Honestly, we can't even put a location on it. The reason we're so involved in this is because someone in our county reported it. We have a photo of it and we have a direction. Uh, we can't even specifically say that's anywhere within our county. But they can say this. You know, we can comfortably say that this is not a plane. Authorities used uh, aviation tracking so systems and worked with the FAA and Air Force. Uh, and Their the information the doesn't show any meteor. lost planes. Uh, the interesting thing is, is the aviation folks are saying it's a meteor. The meteor folks are saying that it's a it's a contrail, so they're they're kind of that's kind of being the contradicting information. Friday, Civil Air Patrol flew a training mission in that general direction. We found nothing. Same goes for the Forest Service. No fires. The sheriff's office doesn't have plans to send anyone else out looking. If it's not threatening public safety or something like that, it, it doesn't make sense for us to keep expanding resources on that type of thing. But so, we may uh, never know say, what yeah, that type of thing was. What we do know is this isn't something we see every day. It's been kind of fun to see what, see people's theories, see what, you know, it, it's kind of comical at times. Morgan Romero, KGW News. Still just a bit of a bizarre mystery.